Hello, Frizzle Fighters. In two words, Uncanny Times is historical supernatural. You know, supernatural like that one CW TV show? Though I do think that might be an insult to this book because I didn't super love the Supernatural TV show. But do you want the story of two siblings traveling the country to hunt down supernatural monsters? Well, then this is the book for you. And it also takes place in 1913. And let me just say, the 1913 vibes, so good. As I am not a time traveler, I can't say for sure how accurate this is. But it certainly gave me the right vibes. I absolutely just love it when I'm reading a historical novel and then I have to look up the definition of a word and then I see the little popularity graph. I'm like, yes, this is one of those old timey words. It just fills me with such joy to be able to learn old timey words in context. It's fun. And where are you going to get to do that other than historical novels? I guess actual historical documents, but we're pretending those don't exist, right? So who are our protagonists? We have Aaron and Rosemary. Adult siblings tragically kind of orphaned, and the dynamic between them was the most fascinating thing. So let me explain that to you. These siblings have a little bit of fae in their ancestors, which gives them a little bit of magic and instincts. And part of the divide between the two siblings is that Rosemary has only a little bit of the instincts, but Aaron, on the other hand, is super good at magic sigils and things like that. And he has so much of this fey magic that other supernatural hunters are often afraid of him because he's a little too close to the monsters that they're hunting. And Aaron is also neurodivergent, a quirk that Rosemary blames on him being a little too fey. This brother and sister, it's them against the world. It's their dynamic duo. They've been working together to fight monsters pretty much their entire lives. When they are out on a hunt, they need to be perfectly in sync. They have trained together, they love each other, they know each other better than anyone else in the world. And yet, there is so much intellectual divide between them. They are constantly struggling to predict the other one's actions. They are constantly surprised by the other one's opinions and how they're reacting. They love each other, but they are resentful of each other sometimes. They want to be the perfect team, but they're often unbalancing each other and disagreeing about the best course of action. And I loved that. Their relationship still has so much trust and love, but it isn't perfect. And part of that is because Aaron is neurodivergent and loves using the fey magic and Rosemary is against that. But I think fundamentally it's also because of the way that they approach their job as being huntsmen. So for Aaron, being a huntsman is a privilege. He is good at this job and he likes being good at this job. And not only that, but being a huntsman separates him from society. He can't have a normal job and social life because of this side job he has. But for him, he didn't really want to be a full member of society. So this is just like, good, I got this as an excuse. Sounds awesome. He finds so much happiness and satisfaction in this job that they're doing. But Rosemary, on the other hand, like she does it. She doesn't hate it. She also finds satisfaction in it, but she also admits to herself that if she could participate more in society, she'd love to be a suffragette. She would love to be able to make friends more easily and maybe get a girlfriend or boyfriend or two. And she resents the fact that killing monsters has to always be her priority number one, when sometimes she'd like it to be something else. That sometimes she doesn't want to have to take care of her brother that's too fey in his mannerisms. Sometimes she doesn't want to be out risking her life all the time. So whenever there were little disagreements between Aaron and Rosemary, whenever there was little friction there, I loved it. I think that is the real strength of this book. And in the end, I did enjoy being in Aaron's perspective more than Rosemary's just because he was more enthusiastic about it all and less judgmental in general. Now the action and mystery plot of them hunting down this magical monster, it was okay. Like not a standout, but it wasn't bad. In the end, after they had wrapped up that plot, it was kind of bittersweet and a little bit more tragic than I was expecting, but at the same time it made me hope so much for the sequel. Mostly because I'm so engaged with the siblings dynamic, I just want more of that, please. But also more monster hunting, would like. And I do admit that that somber, dramatic, tragic mood to the ending fit the detective noir urban fantasy historical mashup style that they were going for. I rated this book four stars. If you made it to the end of the video, put some sort of fish emoji in the comments, you know, for the sea monsters in this book. Subscribe for more videos on Frizzle Fridays. Thank you for watching.